The next task that I'm interested in using StatKey to help me with is to test whether there's a significant difference between the mean from one population and the mean from another population. Okay, and so to do that, what I'm going to do is go over here into this test for difference in means. I click on that, and here again you can see it's already got some data plugged in there, but I'm going to want to get rid of that data and put in my own. So I click Edit Data. That brings up this window here, which again already has the data in it, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. Okay, now I go over to my own data, which is right here, um, and you can see that now instead of just having one category of data, if I scroll down here a little bit, you'll see I've actually got two. So these are all red oak acorn masses that you can see, and if I scroll down just enough, got a fair amount of data here, you can see I get to some where I've got bur oak and their acorn masses. Okay, so I've got two categories of data. It's actually important for StatKey that these be lined up in such a way that you've got the label on the left hand side, so here are the species name, and the actual measurement here on the right hand side. So I need to select both of those columns here. I'll select all my data. I'll copy it, and then I'll go back into StatKey and paste that data in. Here again, I'm going to check I do not have a header row because I did not keep that column label there. Okay, and here again, just like before, you can see that all my data has been input, showing you the sample size for my two populations. Um, it's showing you that my average for the bur oaks was this 5.397 grams, and the average for the red oaks over here was 4.744 grams, but of course we've got a distribution, okay? that's significantly overlapping. On average, my, my difference between these two means was negative 0.65 grams, suggesting that on average, the red oaks are 0.65 grams lighter than the bur oaks, okay? That's my difference in mean. Uh, what I wanna do here is figure out, can I really trust that difference? Is it real or might it have happened due to chance? And what we're gonna do to test that idea is say, well, what if, the two populations really are the same. Um, and so the difference I found was just due to random chance. I happened to grab some heavy bur oak acorns. I happened to grab some light red oak acorns. But really, red oak acorns and bur oak acorns are the same. To assume that, what I'm going to do is toss all those acorns into the same bunch together. Okay, so we've got all of my acorns combined. And what I'm going to do is randomly pull half of them and say, well, let's take the average of that. Randomly pull the other half, let's take the average of that, and see how different they are. On average, I'd expect them to be not very different because I've combined my whole sample pool. But we'll see what happens. So again, here I can generate one sample. And you see my sample right over here. It found that there was a difference of negative 0.13, so a pretty small difference. Again, we expect a small difference because we've pooled all of our data together. We're treating them all as the same and then randomly pulling them apart. So if we're just doing that by random chance, they should be pretty similar. Let's, let's see what another sample gets us. So I'll click generate another sample. Here we go. This one had a, had a difference between the two sample means of negative 0 0.02. Um, so pretty darn close. Do another one. In this case, I found positive 0.27. But again, we're kind of all centering around zero, which makes sense because I'm treating all of these things as one big pool and then just randomly pulling from that. Let's now generate a thousand samples. And here again, you see that the data seems to center right around zero, which makes sense to us. I'll generate another thousand samples. Let's get up to 5,000 samples here. You can see here that the mean of those 5,000 samples is pretty darn close to zero, which again is what we expect because I've pooled all of that data together and I'm just randomly separating it out, this half on this side, this half on that side. What are their means? How different are they? But you also see that occasionally I get one where there's a, a difference. Over here, you know, a big difference of 0.8. Over here, a big difference, negative 0.8. And what I'm really interested in finding out now is how rare are those instances where you got a big difference? Because I want to know how unlikely or how likely is it that this difference that I originally found happened due to random chance. So to do that, 
Let's click our two tailed again over here. And what that's going to bring up is, well, where did 95% of my difference in means fall if I treated everything as all the same? What you can see is that most of the time they fell between negative 0.497 and 0.487. So it's pretty rare to get a difference of negative 0.65. To find out exactly how rare, what I'm going to do is click on this negative 0.47 and that brings up my interanumerical cutoff value. What I'm going to use for that cutoff value is what my original difference of means was, which if you can see there is negative 0.65. So negative 0.65, and then I hit enter. And here's what you can see. If I go all the way out to a difference of negative 0.65, that only happens this very small percentage of the time. Right? It's very rare to get something that extreme. In fact, only 0.5% of the time would I get something that extreme in that direction. Okay, So now what I can say is that it's highly unlikely that my original difference here that I found between my two sample means was due to chance alone. Okay, Due to chance alone, I only got something that extreme this very rare percentage of the times. Now that is going to allow me to say that I think there's a statistically significant difference between the mass of the burr oaks and the red oak acorns.